Hi, I'm Ryan Malone with McElroy Manufacturing. Today I'm going to show you how to operate the Spider 125. The Spider 125 is a socket fusion tool used in field installations of 63 to 125 millimeter polypropylene pipe and fittings. Before I get started, it's important to let you know that I will refer to polypropylene random pipe as PPR pipe for the rest of the video. It's also important to note that we are in a controlled, safe environment for this demonstration. We highly encourage that you observe the safety recommendations dictated by your job site, OSHA, or any other guidelines. The first step to using the Spider 125 is to properly seat the inserts all the way into the machine. I'm using the 4 inch coupling side inserts, which are easily identified by their labeling on the insert. The insert with the four tab stops will go into the front of the thinner mounting block. The other coupling side insert will be installed into the back of this mounting block. The inserts are now properly seated. We're going to use these black ratcheting knobs to tighten the inserts into the jaw. You may notice that they won't rotate all the way around. That's okay. Simply pull the spring-loaded knob out, reposition the knob handle, then release and continue to tighten. Now that we're set on the fitting side, let's move to the pipe side. Just like the fitting side, two inserts will need to be used. These inserts have a groove in the middle. That groove needs to face in towards the shorter mounting block. Again, you'll use the black clamp knobs to ratchet the inserts tightly to the jaw of the spider. Most PPR pipe manufacturers recommend that you use an alcohol-based cleaning cloth to clean the pipe. We're looking to remove anything on the pipe that could contaminate and compromise the integrity of our weld. Also, you will need to clean the inside of the pipe fitting. With the fusion area properly cleaned, I'm going to use this stab depth gauge to give myself a visual mark on the pipe of how far I need to stab the pipe into the fitting. Sharpie markers work great for this. Next I'm going to take the spider and attach it to the pipe behind the stab depth mark I've just made. Wrap the chain completely around the pipe, then use the hand clamp knob to tighten. Make sure you give yourself enough space to work and make adjustments later. One of the most critical parts of this procedure is attaching the spider to the fitting or coupling. As you fit the coupling inside the jaws, make sure it's seated against all four of the stops of the innermost insert. Be careful here. There will be a temptation to touch the inside of the coupling area that you just cleaned. That is not recommended. Clamp the chain around the fitting and tighten using the hand clamp knob. As you tighten, make sure the coupling remains flush against all four stops of the insert. Now that you have both the pipe and fitting in the spider and the stab depth marked on the pipe, it's time to engage the spider's built-in stab depth gauge. The spider's gauge is laser etched for proper pipe and fitting sizes. Since we're socket fusing 4 inch or 125 millimeter pipe, we will move the stab depth gauge out to the 125 millimeter mark. After setting the internal stab depth, we will crank the handle to bring the fitting to the pipe until the stab depth gauge touches the metal plate on the fitting side mounting block. You'll notice I'm not positioned correctly on the pipe. That's okay. We'll loosen the clamp knobs on the pipe side and bring the pipe side insert over to the visual mark on the pipe and the depth shown by the internal stab depth gauge. That gives you two ways to check your depth gauge. Now tighten the chains back up. Next, we're going to disengage the internal stab depth gauge. Position your finger on the button and push, rolling down so that when the stab depth gauge retracts, it doesn't injure your finger. The gauge will retract quickly as it is spring-loaded. Now I'm going to bring the pipe and fitting together again. I can see that I'm a little low on the pipe side. That's okay because the spider has a built-in feature to even that out. First, we loosen the chain with the large clamp knob. We loosen the inserts with the ratcheting knobs. After that, find the silver height adjustment knob. The knob has five positions, a zero position, and two higher and two lower positions. Each position represents a 15 hundredths of an inch change in height. After the adjustment, tighten the ratcheting knobs and the chain back to make sure the spider is tightly secured on the pipe. Then double check the stab depth, reinsuring the coupling seats nicely in the pipe. 
With everything secure and properly lined up, it's time to seat the pipe and fitting. We're using a 4 inch McElroy heater with an auxiliary handle today. I recommend the extra handle because it gives you more leverage to get the heater on and off the pipe without displacing any of the molten material. It's important to check the heater temperature. Today we are checking to make sure the heater is at 500 degrees Fahrenheit plus or minus 18 degrees. Our pyrometer shows that we are within the temperature range. At this time we will clean the heater with a clean non-synthetic cloth. This will ensure that we have a clean heater before fusing. With the heater up to temperature and clean, I'm going to insert the heater into the spider, onto the pipe end, and inside the fitting. You'll notice I'm bringing the pipe and fitting in touch with the heater. I'm being firm with it, but I'm also letting the heat do the work. Once the material melts a little, it allows me a little bit more freedom to crank and bring it together even more. After I work the fitting and pipe all the way onto the heater, you'll see that I have a bead developed right against the heater and the fitting. Once I get to that point, I'll start my timer for one minute as determined by the PPR pipe manufacturer. After the minute, we're going to quickly open the spider. Using the double handled heater, we're going to get the heater out and bring the pipe and fitting together. When closing, you want to evenly apply force until you make it to the sharpie mark or to the stops of the insert. If the joint needs to be squared a little, you can back off the crank a little bit to give it that. Leave the pipe and fitting clamped in the machine for the pipe manufacturer's prescribed cooling time. Once your joint has properly cooled, it is time to remove the machine. To take the spider off the newly created joint, rotate the large clamp knobs until the chain loosens and you are able to unhook the chain from the opposite side. After the Spider 125 is out of the way, you can inspect the socket fusion joint to see if the fusion has been properly performed. We're looking for a nice, consistent double roll back bead around the base of the joint. We hope this video has provided insight in the use of the Spider 125 and its unique capabilities for making difficult socket fusions on PPR job sites. To find out more about McElroy's tooling for the PPR market, visit www.mcelroy.com forward slash PPR. For more instructional videos from McElroy University Online, visit www.mcelroy.com forward slash university. I'm Ryan Malone. Thanks for joining me.